morning everybody nash and joe again with the tampa drain dudes today we're here in the odessa area of florida doing a yard drain install and downspout redirecting customer here got a new pool in new sod you can tell you can see all the striping still from the edges but we're getting a lot of pooling water in the middle of this yard from these downspouts hitting the fence and not having anywhere to go. You can see it's killing some of the grass, puddling up. So Joe, what are we gonna do? Well, we are gonna install a nice little French drain system in here. We're gonna start just a little bit past this back fence, come down, tie in all these downspouts, put a couple catch basins in, and uh, kind of just get it going, follow that little slope, and we're gonna end it just outside that back gate where it's gonna go and disperse into that natural area hopefully solve all their issues. We're gonna show you how to do this yourself if you're having this issue. Super simple fix. It's just gonna take a little bit of effort. Effort and sweat. So stay tuned. Let's get it. Joe's so gonna start removing the sod. We'll go ahead and get started taking off these downspouts. If they are riveted in, sometimes they're screwed. If they're riveted like this, you can give them some wiggles and they'll pop off. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Do, 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 do. There's Oon. Uh oh. Looks like that doggy had the Hershey squirts. Hashtag. Gross. Now normally we don't get this lucky with newer sod so we can't just peel it back. What you're going to do is take a nice wide shovel like these blue huskies. I'll show you here on this existing sod the best way to easily clean it up, pick whatever nicely. can't talk this morning. Pick the sod up. Start on one side. You're just going to chop down the line. Don't need to go too deep, just a good step. Do a line down this way, a little bit wider than the width of the pipe you're bearing. For us, it's four inch pipe today. Swap sides over here. And once you go down that line, just go every two or three feet or so, and you can chop off edges like this. Get nice clean pieces of sod and you can set those to the side. That way you can put them back after. Don't have to resod your whole yard when you do this. You can trench rather clean. Once we get that trench dug, put the pipe in, bury it, so it'll go right back on top. Look like we were never here. Now, whenever you are trenching, we like to use tarps. You can use trash bags, pretty much anything. This will make this job a lot faster and a lot cleaner. Take your tarp, nice long one, and just lay it along where you're gonna trench. You can throw all that excess dirt in this tarp rather than on your sod. And whenever you're done, you can just pick up the tarp and basically pour it back into the trench. Nice. It's windy today for once in Florida. Nice change. We said we're gonna put that just on the edge. Joe's gonna get that catch basin dug and I'm gonna start trenching. Some good clay today. Now the reason we're doing a yard drain instead of a traditional French drain is because of this clay. It's dense, does not allow water to pass through, so water sits on top. So we are looking for surface water solutions, not subsurface. We're running solid pipe instead of perforated. But we'll show you that when we get to the pipe. Pro tip of the day, dig backwards. Much easier, much faster digging backwards like this than it is forwards. Why 
allows you to be very aware of how you're sloping the drain, making sure you got that good downhill grade. Yep. Only thing you're not going to be aware of is what's behind you, and I do roll my ankle a lot doing this. So be careful. <laughs> or just have better, better balance than Nash. Or do better than Nash. Which isn't very hard. No, two things everybody can do. Have better balance than me and get a better knife than me. <laughs> if you have seen our other videos, you know. You know what? <laughs> we're, we're talking about. I'm going to go ahead and cut to when we've already dug this. Right, Joe's finishing with the first start of that trench. We like to do it in probably 10 to 20 foot sections. He tied it, didn't he? This guy's such a weenie when it comes to... Things flying out of the back of the truck, I tell you what. Weenie Joe, that's what I'm gonna start calling him. What? But I'm not a weenie! I'm sorry, sir, but my sensors indicate that you are indeed a weenie. Now we do have some excess from yesterday's job. So we'll be using that. Solid pipe, no perforations, no holes in it. Moving water from point A to point B, we're not trying to absorb it, we're just moving it. This pipe is great for that, it is sturdy. I've got uh, tons of videos, I'm like 180. All right, actually I'm losing weight right now, I haven't been hitting the gym, but I can walk on this. I'm putting my whole weight on it right now. No dents, especially once this is buried, covered in dirt and compacted, this stuff is solid. You just gotta install it right. Joe's setting up to put that catch basin in. I'm gonna set up to get this downspout connected. When we connect downspouts, we use a downspout adapter. Just connects a four inch downspout to a four inch corrugated pipe. Pretty simple, you just slide this up on the downspout, tap it with a screw, which I'll show you in a second. Joe's gonna get that. Put in the catch basin. We like to tap a screw into all of our connections just to hold it whenever we're putting this drain in. That way we don't pull it one way and disassemble the drain. That set where it needs to be, that lid of that catch basin is just below the sod line. Go ahead, tap with the screw to hold it. And then he's gonna backfill nice and compact just by hand around that catch basin so it doesn't move. You want to really compact it because that first rain is going to come and wash out all around that catch basin. It can make it float up. So just mush it down. He's doing that. I'm going to use a Y to connect this downspout. We use Y because it's better flow. It comes in here and it's already going in line. You could use a T, but you got to think that water is going to be hitting the wall, slowing down the flow of the water. So it's a lot better to use a Y. Simple, little uh, change up than using a T right there, but it makes a big difference in the performance of your drainage system. You can make your mark on the inside of this coupling. Right there. If you have a good knife, this pipe cuts really easy. I do not, so. It does not. Got that all set. Pop this in. I'll put a screw in there. And then I'm going to take this part, connect it here. to the downspout. The adapter's going to be on there. Make your mark. And then cut. Now we got that downspout wide in here. Joe's got his catch basin nice and compact right there. So we're just going to backfill this little part that we did. 
slide down and continue. Remove sod, trench, put in pipe, connect down, spout, backfill, slide down and repeat. Really mundane stuff, guys. If you can do 10 feet, you can do 2 billion feet. You should probably use an excavator if you're going to do 2 billion feet. Probably also have the money to pay somebody if you have 2 billion feet of property. I bet you just feel silly now. <laughs> silly old me. Silly old Willy. <laughs> Alright. Cut a circle around that sod. Got the dirt back on here. Now whenever we put that dirt back in, don't pack it down too hard. Nice pat. Put the sod on top. And your sod's gonna sit a tiny bit higher. It'll be that way for about a week or two until that dirt settles in under the pipe and then it'll be back level. If you put it lower or level with the way it is right now, it's gonna end up sinking down and it's gonna be lower. It won't look as good. I do want to take a minute to point out <clears throat> one big part of drainage. A lot of contractors, home builders will talk about other drainage guys. That's the grading of your house. These houses should be graded towards each other to the front and to the back. So water comes down and goes one direction. This property is actually graded pretty well. However, in the very middle, there is a bit of a belly. Um, so right there in the center is where we're having a lot of those drainage issues. Is there a turkey? I'm not sure why the video stopped. I might have said something that sounded like STOP recording. <laughs> but this thing is starting to tick me off sometimes now, actually. Um, what I was saying about the grading. Yes, you can grade the house towards each other. See all this tall grass? All this squishiness, that's what happens when the grading is the only thing that's done. So a lot of the times, it's actually more affordable to do a drainage system rather than regrade, resod the whole yard. The way it is, we know where the low spots are. We know where the water pools, so we can put catch basins in those zones to take care of it. And then we can grade our trench instead of the whole yard. Now, if you want a perfectly smooth level yard, obviously you're going to want to do grading for that. But if you're just trying to protect your foundation, you need a good drainage system, not just good grading. Gutters, another part of that, that help. See, one house does not have gutters. One does. When they do, we can connect the downspouts and gather as much of that water as possible coming from the roof lines. If they don't have any downspouts, we have to do more catch basins because there's more linear footage of surface water that we're going to have to collect. Hope that makes sense. Let's see if we can't see that turkey back here. Joe's always making stuff up. Yep, don't see no turkey. It was all bullshit. <laughs> now, another suggestion you can do, you can tape and screw all of these fittings. We are not because there's no root intrusion. A lot of people think the tape is there to keep the water in, to keep it watertight. It's not. These are not watertight systems. They do not need to be. Water follows the path of least resistance and if you have openings and cracks like there, water ain't gonna flow out. It's gonna flow from the top in and down the line. Not enough to really help the drainage system, but it's not gonna negatively affect it at all. You only want to tile tape if you need to make it water type, which wouldn't be this. But Usually if you we do that when there's palm tree roots that are if there's roots very aggressive um, because in these joints they'll find their way inside of it, grow little root balls and then the drain doesn't work anymore. Yep. Tape is for root intrusion, mainly that's what it works best for. We have trees way back there and one palm tree way up there. Now these shrubs, hedges, stuff like that, plants, if you've got plants alongside your house, tape these joints because roots will find their way in. We have no worries about that. Nothing to worry about. So we're tapping a screw and continuing our way. If you uh, disagree with that, then go ahead and leave it in the comments and I'll go ahead and put a thumbs down because you're wrong and we're right. Boo! <laughs> How 
rude. How rude. <laughs> How rude. <laughs> Moving down this line, got that first catch facing in, sawed back on top. Down spout number one, tight end. We like to put catch facings relatively close after we connect the down spout in. That way, over time, these roof granules are going to come into the down spouts. The leaves are going to come into the down spouts. Come into this drain line. If you put a catch basin after that down spout, it gives you an access point to clean it out. Like this dirt here. So whenever those roof granules come down that line, they'll all get stuck here in this catch basin. So once a year, you can actually maintain this system. It'll last you a lot longer. Sawed back on to our third catch basin. Which we're now going to trench to get to our second downspout. We're probably an hour and a half in, maybe two hours. We're moving pretty slow. It's very relaxed today. Um, but it shows you you can get this done in a day very easily. Normally, if we're moving quick and rush and we'd probably be near done but we're kind of chilling downspout number two coming up pop it in now i gotta cut more pipe though yeah that's what takes the longest in these jobs doing all these little cuts if it was a straight line would have been done an hour ago no, we're gonna have to work all the way till noon today. <sighs> tired of it. Tired of these long four hour days. <laughs> oh. Yeah. A little less time keeping score. Everybody, right now, comment your favorite song at the moment. Go. If you don't, you hate puppies and children. What are you looking at, Joe? It's a little Jurassic, A little Jurassic? Oh! <laughs> a dinosaur. Spared no expense. All right, moving down the line. Got that next one in. I know all of you, right at the start of this video when I walked through, you guys are like, what are you going to do for the channel drain? That's what you guys were all thinking, all wondering. So I'm going to tell you. Catch basin. We're going to do a one-way right here. This super gutter, a six-inch downspout, goes to the one eye. Doesn't get a ton of roof line water, so we're just putting a catch basin right here for that. Let it dump out. I'm going to do a one-way catch basin right here. That way this channel drain has somewhere to actually drain. If we don't do that, this sod's gonna grow up and block this channel drain. I don't know if you can see that. Block this channel drain. Still can't see that. Block this channel drain. And the water's not gonna flow out. It's not gonna work. So we like to put a catch basin right here below it. And we'll wire that in as well. Moving through this job, even when we're trying to go slow, we're just too quick. Catch basin in, catch basin in, just backfilling. This last round, we're going to do a catch basin right in front of this downspout right here because they've got really good slopes, so we're not too worried about washout right there. And we will carry it straight to a pop-up emitter, which I'm actually just gonna show you once we get to that point. Well, Joe already done connected it. Already done did it. He already done did it. He's quick like that. Yes, sir. It's just a pop-up emitter. Water comes out of here and do this elbow right here. There's a weep hole at the bottom down here. Yeah, pull it up out of that side. Viewer can see. There's a weep hole right there. So if there's only a tiny bit of water in the system, it'll drain down through the bottom. But if it's flowing good, like it should, this lifts up, this lifts, this lifts up. Can't do it with my gloves. This lifts up right here <laughs> and <laughs> lets the water drain out nice and calmly. 
that Plus way erosion. doesn't erode all down here. This is called a four inch pop up emitter. This is what we recommend you use unless you can daylight. We don't like to daylight all the time because daylighting's and just leaving the pipe open lets bugs, critters, squirrels, snakes, frogs, rats go up in the pipe. Boo. And you don't if you want that. Seen that rat video, check it out. It's a good watch. Check out that rat video on our channel, Tampa Drain Dudes. It's called. I don't remember what that video is called, but I'll link it here now. <laughs> Sometimes you'll see contractors use catch basins at the end. The reason you don't want to do that is because when all the debris coming through this pipe floats down to the end, if you have a catch basin at the end, all that debris is going to come up like this. It's going to get stuck. It's going to block off any water from coming out, and it's going to backflow the whole system. It's going to start clogging the whole system. And then you're going to have to replace it or get it flushed. So we use a pop emitter so that does not happen. Time to put the saw back and get up out of here. See when you set this saw to the side, it makes for a much quicker cleanup. Just put it back together like a puzzle. And we'll just walk down the edge of each side at the end. Early day, Culver's. Go ahead, sponsor us because we give you guys a shout out pretty much every video. And all seven of our followers <laughs> are gonna go eat at Culver's, I can guarantee you that. Seriously, Culver's though, do the right thing. Bring back that black pepper mayo pub burger thing. That was the greatest thing that ever happened to humanity. And then you took it away. You took it from us. You took it too far, man. You took it too far. <laughs> and you brought the pub burger back, but it wasn't the pub burger that we had. So whatever that delicious black pepper one. I see forums on Reddit and everything all the time about that burger. I have dreams about that burger. Bring it back. We like the uh, Land of Lakes location manager of that one if you see this or Wesley Chapel either one thank you back to the video well guys that's it for the day got this yard drain installed down to us redirected into it we're back we're nice and level the yards already a lot drier gonna water test this and get out of here if you guys have any questions comments leave them below if this video helped you out entertained you anything else like subscribe to the channel helps us out a bunch share this to any friends family or anybody who is interested in exterior drainage which probably isn't anybody you know so joe you got anything to add i mean that's pretty much covered it so uh just have a great day you guys and take this as a sign to uh get out there and tackle any project. Catch you on the next one.